here's my review of Kubuntu 12.10. So this is the first release of Kubuntu, where they're no longer funded by Canonical, and now funded by a company called Blue Systems. But a lot of the code hosting is still done under Canonical and the, the Ubuntu website as well. So for the end user, you're not really going to see any difference. It, you can still install packages from Ubuntu and its other derivatives. It's just the only difference is it's funded by another company now. So they haven't strived to change too much from the 12.04 release. So no real bugs in this one. I've actually found it quite quick and easy to use. It's certainly a lot better than Ubuntu 12.10 was. If you've seen my review of it, I was very disappointed by it. Whereas with Kubuntu, it's like, yeah, okay, it's a nice distro, not too much different, but it's just a fresher, more updated selection of packages on it now. So you'll notice with Kubuntu, with the KDE desktop, it's more of a traditional layout. So you've got a application or start menu in the bottom corner, you've got a taskbar, and you can put icons on your desktop. But what you can do over and above with Kubuntu is adding called widgets and other panels to the desktop. So it's quite a, there's quite a selection of widgets you can add to it. I'm just scrolling along quickly, because I'm sure I've shown these more in other videos. But yeah, basically quite a lot of things you can add to the desktop. So let's just put one thing on. There you are, I've got a timer on the desktop. I wish you can rotate things around and yeah. <laughs> basically, a lot of fancy features you can do there. Now another thing I quite like with Kubuntu is the Dolphin File Manager. I actually reckon it is a lot better than Nautilus. So you've got the preview on the right hand side. So let's just go across to one of the folders and yeah, you can see it's got some pictures in there and then hover over the pictures and it shows a little preview. And it's not just applicable for pictures, you can do for audio and even for videos as well. There's some issue I'm noticing here that playback of videos is very laggy. I'm not just not sure it's a, just a virtual box issue or whether it is an issue with the whole operating system, but I've upped it to four CPU cores and but it's pretty much maxing out for a standard definition video. So that's very weird. And the other nice program is Amrock Audio Player. You know, it's quite a nice audio player where you've got like lyrics and Wikipedia information about the song. So there you go. Some quite nice features there. Let's see what we have in the way of applications that are pre-installed. Now we should find that there are quite a few now because the ISO size has got a lot larger. It's now one gig ISO file. So starting under games, just one card game here, K Patience. Under graphics, so we've got Creator, Image Editor, Ocular Document Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, Scanlight, Scanner, Gwenview Image Viewer, Camaso Picture Retriever, and K snapshot. Under internet, well, there's quite a few things under here, I'm not going to read all these out, but you'll notice we've got a Firefox installer because you'll see the default web browser is Reconk. Just open that up. Looking on YouTube, we'll see we can play YouTube files, but I have had to install the restricted extras. So you can do that during install, you get the option there for installing third party applications. Or you can install the Kubuntu restricted extras at a later point. Right, carrying on, under multimedia, we've got Amarok Audio Player, as we've already seen, K3B Disc Burner, KMix Sound Mixer, and the Dragon Video Player. I'm just going to show you what I mean with the videos being a bit laggy here, because I mentioned that. Here you see it's very slow. Under Office, so we've got the K Address Book. Kexi Database Creator, that's a new one on me, I've not seen that one before. We've got LibreOffice, and it's LibreOffice version 3.6. And we've got System Settings, and there's a fair few settings you can change under here. So, just a quick glance there, Desktop Effects, and there's a lot of the animations like you could get in Compiz. But see, it comes with some of them already pre-working, because they are got transparency on Window Move, got some animations on Minimize and Maximize, so for installing software, you've got the Moon Software Center and Moon Package Manager. So I'm just typing it here in the searcher and we'll open it up. So that's the Package Manager. And this is the Software Center. I noticed here in the Software Center, you don't get the option for purchasing applications like you would in the Ubuntu Software Center. 
but otherwise it's fairly similar. You've got the application ratings and reviews. You can get the more info and you can yeah, see what people have said about it. Switching across to Moon Package Manager, you can see that's like Synaptic Package Manager, which you don't get pre-installed now in Ubuntu. I suppose it's a bit more complicated, but you've got more control here over the updates and you can check about packages and dependencies. Here's what I thought of Kubuntu 12.10. So easy to use. Yeah, it's reasonably easy enough to use. So ease of installation. Yep, you've got the GUI installer and it's easy enough to install to dual boot with Windows. Styling. I'm starting to think it feels a bit dated now with KDE. It doesn't look much different from before. You've got the grey wallpaper as a default and the grey applications. It, I just feel it a bit dated now. I know it's easy enough to change, but I'm basing it on its default look. The boot up speed. Actually, it was pretty quick to boot up. It certainly feels a lot quicker than previous versions of Kubuntu. Responsiveness, yep, yeah, it was pretty quick. Number of bugs, yeah, just minor one, which I'll go into in more in a moment. Selection of pre-installed applications. Uh, it's just a proprietary codex not pre-installed, but you can install them during the installer or you can install the Kubuntu restricted extras later on. Number of apps available. Well, I noticed it don't have the option for purchasing applications like you get in the Ubuntu software center. So there's not quite as many available in Kubuntu as you get in Ubuntu. And yeah, you've got both the 32 and 64-bit versions. So good points. It's a lot more stable than Ubuntu 12.10 and there was no driver issues with NVIDIA. <laughs> it would install straight away on my system. Uh, the bad points, well, this is the bug I was mentioning. It, I noticed a lot of excessive CPU, CPU usage when watching videos. I don't seem to recall that being a problem before. I know I was looking at there in VirtualBox, but other distros have worked fine in VirtualBox and played videos okay. So, not entirely convinced though. Anyway, overall 85%. So that's uh, certainly a good score. Thanks for watching, see you later.